In 2012, Matt Fraction and David Aha's run on Hawkeye made a name for both of them by telling a close, personal, street-level story with a distinct look, style, and a lot of heart. And let's be honest, they were already huge in the comics industry to begin with. But that run resonated with fans and has been the bulk of source material for the new Disney Plus show. Uh, and while the adaptation is great, in fact, far better than I expected, I have one glaring massive beef with this series, but a lot of very positive expectations and a lot of things I love about it. So stay with me. I'm Dan Upton, and this is the Doomcast. First of all, let's just acknowledge that we all kind of dislike Jeremy Renner. I mean, personally, not as an actor. He just seems like a jerk, a little arrogant and a little frustrating to deal with. And honestly, that's why he works so well as Hawkeye, especially in this series. What gives Hawkeye his great and lasting appeal is in part that everyman quality. And I think that that tends to get overlooked because the depth of that gets lost on some creative teams. But a clear success of the Fraction AHA series is embracing his man of the people, salt of the earth, down to earth, working class human guy who just happens to be on the Avengers role. The series literally starts with Hawkeye fighting a landlord over rent gouging. He fights the guy and then buys the whole ass building off of him. Freaking comrade Clint right there. And that's just the start of the whole diehard-esque background of that series. And this TV adaptation maintains that diehard feel more than just taking place, at least in part, in an apartment building, but also the classic 90s Shane Black elements of a rough and tumble family man who's trying to balance family and duty over Christmas, getting himself into amazingly painful situations that should have killed him eight or nine times over, but it's also set in the Marvel Universe and it doesn't skimp on action, but also doesn't take itself too seriously. In fact, um, it feels so fresh and unlike any of the other previous Disney Plus series in total, some of which felt a lot more like a product than a performance. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this series alongside any of the two first episodes of the best MCU series that was on Netflix previously. Aside from that, there's some frankly incredible characters lurking in the background. First of all, Lucky the Pizza Dog, which is great to see, and I genuinely hope we get a whole episode from his perspective as we do in the comic. Second is Eleanor Bishop, which, all right, I don't know if they're going to end up making her Madame Mask in this, or maybe they just loosely connect her to Master Z Beagle. Either way, I am vastly more excited about the idea of Jacques Duquesne, the swordsman, because the swordsman is such a ludicrous D-list adventure that I have no choice but to love him. Fun fact, if they are such an obscure character that they have never had an action figure made of them, I love them like 500 times more automatically. Anyway, whole ass swordsman video is probably incoming, but it's the guy that trained Hawkeye basically and initially as a villain and then turns into Avenger also, and his costume is great and so campy and perfect in every possible way. God, I hope I don't end up underwhelmed. They gave him a really nice mustache and they didn't even do that for Batroc Zelipier. It is also amazing how quickly and powerfully the series develops Hawkeye as a character more capably than the rest of the Marvel films in general. First, you put this traumatized guy with hearing loss in a musical about him and his buddies saving the world where he's barely even a character. And they include Ant-Man, where Ant-Man wasn't even a part of the crew in the original MCU Battle of New York, although my buddy has a very wild fan theory that because of the multiversal war created uh, in Loki, this takes place in a divergent timeline, possibly, and the inclusion of Ant-Man is our first clue to that. But just the same, shout out Ryan Christopher Morrison. Kate is really surprising off the bat, and they immediately incorporate all the detective elements alongside the really creative brawling that brings everything I loved about the Kelly Thompson Hawkeye Kate Bishop run to life. She's a high achieving mess of a person who absolutely does not have her shit together, and that is what we're here for. That's why we love her. Honestly, if they fail at making a Young Avengers show or film at this point, and then they do so, if they do so without Iron Lad Kang, God, good God, have they missed the boat. Okay, so visually, thematically, character development wise, this is pitch perfect. Even if this wasn't a Marvel show, I would still be highly engrossed. I would put it alongside Loki and what if, but it also feels a lot more like it could be an HBO or Showtime show in the early to mid aughts, like a golden age premium format TV show. So that said, what's my gripe? A gripe is that these, as I've said before, these adaptations from comics from both Marvel and from DC sorely and painfully underpay and underrecognize the creative talent that originally built the property that it ends up being based off of. 
Now, Matt Fraction does have a consulting producer credit, which he should, which of course is vastly more than a lot of prior creators, save for Brian Michael Bendis have actually gotten in the past. But Aha's name isn't anywhere to be seen, and the problem which fellow creators and fans have pointed out and loudly drawn attention to is that his work is the framework of the look and feel of this entire show. If the work for higher creators' work is being made into billion dollar intellectual property that forms the framework of that near trillion dollar company's biggest franchise, it is unreasonable that that person should have, say, any regular ass people bills at all forever. Even a credit that just says based on the comic by Matt Fraction and David Aha would be fantastic. And if your response is, well, they took the work for hire at the time and that's what they agreed to, um, how does Mickey Mouse's cock taste deep inside of your throat, you huge neck bearded loser? Or is all you can taste at that point mouse balls? I really don't understand that. There's no need to simp for a multi billion dollar company at all. A regular person's whole mortgage is a rounding error in gross annual profit for that company. Bob Iger takes wet shits worth more than $500,000, so get the fuck out of my face and cut the check. Anyhow, in a testament to the true class act that he is, David Aha Monday tweeted a reminder that Don Heck, the co-creator of Hawkeye, Iron Man, and Black Widow, has also received very sparse credit in the MCU as well, and he's right. As much as I love this series, as a spot on as it is, it hits the mark. Ah, uh, I still don't like knowing that some of the critical people in the story's conception and production are getting cut out of the gravy train. And maybe that doesn't bother you, but you know who else it wouldn't sit well with? Hawkeye. Both of them. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.